place uh, was started by uh, a gentleman named Benedito, it was 32 years ago. He had a sort of like a, a little grocery store. They started uh, selling rice and, uh, and all, and all of a sudden it just grew to what it is now. Let me get, let me get ribs in that middle, don't wait back there. Come here. So it's pretty famous. It starts so many places you can still get it. Come and buy lunch for six dollars and you get a drink, you get a salad for six dollars. Come here, you get fed. Real good. Yo, your wife told you to get the juicy control, and I got it for her. This place always been important, man. Always been important, man. The white folks is taking over. <laughs> they building up for the white folks, man. They sending the they sending the Spanish people all off, off. I mean, there are still, uh, you know, the Spanish population, but not as much as uh, when I was growing up. Everyone was Dominican or Puerto Rican or not even so much Ecuadorian or, you know, Mexicans. But now it's majority uh, white, Caucasian. There's very, very little local Spanish food, so there really aren't places like this. Exactly what I'm talking about. Every night, this goes on right here, every night. Sometimes it does get a little, it gets a little, a little crowded. But I guess they they know that the, that it's not enough for so many people. That it's just for the food that we have left over. So instead of throwing it away, we give it out to them. He's the one that serves that serves them the food. He hands out the food every night uh, for about say ten years. They they know they know more they know them more than I do. And they know what they like, some of them the way it works, and what they, you know. So as I joke around, I, I tell them to hand them out the menus. <laughs> The uh, director of community affairs from the prison come and ask us to stop giving it out because they tend to get a little rowdy sometimes, make a lot of noise. But uh, you know they can't make me do that. Although you, you could tell that some of them. Uh, have drug problems, they have drinking problems, but they still need. To me, food, if you come to my house, I would never say not to food. Whatever is on the table is for whoever shows up. And I feel the same way. I feel the same way running this business. That's it.
sub breakfast, Spanish breakfast, Dominican breakfast, mango, fried cheese, salami, that's the way we start all day. Right. My name is June. I work in here on a Zoom Ferro restaurant. I learned so much because my English is not very well. I'm from the OR. And uh, it's like in a family, and uh, the price is very cheap. And uh, the owner is very well. Well, this is good. This is that I told you before, this is like in a family. <laughs> They have uh, customers that go there every day. Like you know, they won't, they, they wouldn't feel right going to another restaurant if they don't go to that restaurant. Our, our store has to, we have to buy more, more things related to coffee and more things to uh, uh, Red Bulls and water. Uh, yeah, that would, that would be something a typical white person would buy. Uh, cigarettes, you guys like that? Uh, they like that a lot as well. Um, but a lot of Hispanic stuff we don't even buy that more. Less and less Hispanics are, are living out here. They, they can't afford the rent. The Dominican Republic, where Jose was born, where I was born, it's just a different world. I mean, if you went there, you'd see there's nothing. He knows what it is not to have. It makes you feel like I'm doing something. Um, you know, it's that. we should get more people involved doing things like that. A few of them that buy, that buy these plates for like a quarter and just take them over there and they have to the, every day and just to fill it up with food. So it's a way, you know, a way for them to eat every day.